Is there a tripod in this bag? crafty little wood knickknacks you guys have. Suffering such intense imposter syndrome right now. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> because I'm totally untrained and uh, don't know how to paint. I'm gonna start with this guy because you guys start with this guy. Actually I'm gonna start drawing. Hey there's a bug stuck in here. What's that? Funny looking yellow color there. Yellow. <laughs> yeah. Love it when Richie does that thing with the sticks in his hands. I'm gonna do that too. Like a grown up. You can make it the exact proportions of yours by looking through and finding the proportions, and then put it up. Richie. Yeah, exactly. What's... Oh, you're my favorite. That'll work. That looks like the thing I want to paint, kind of. What? I was talking to the painting. Sorry. Sorry. Pete, when you first start, you said you have little experience painting. Mm -hmm. So when you start and doing one like just on like plain air, mm -hmm. it's a very difficult thing to undertake as far as just like jumping into it. It's very what difficult. What do you? What do you look out there and like start with? Like, what did you, what were you thinking when you started? Mm -hmm. I like that there's big discernible layers with the shapes of color that are easy for me to recognize. Which are? Um, well, there's a big dark gray back layer and then deep green middle layer and then a, a very light greenish yellowish foreground layer and then a, a road that kind of ties it all together. The road doesn't actually tie it all together, but it grounds me as a person who's on the road. Yeah. Do you mind talking while you paint? Um, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, that kind of looks like that color. See, and then I do this thing, I take this shortcut all the time when I have a color on my brush because I'm afraid uh, of mixing colors. Uh, uh, like it like really is a scary thing for me because I don't know how to do it. I'm like, oh, this looks approximately like the green on the edge yeah. of the road as well, but yeah. it's not, it's, it's not. I think a helpful place to start is learning what, like that everything is basically um, the result of primaries, you know, red, yellow, blue. And is it red, is it yellow, is it blue? Mm -hmm. And obviously it's not straight from the tube, one of those primaries very often, but it's probably dominant one of those things. And so you can look at it and analyze, would it be more red, more yellow, more blue? And it kind of tells you where to start. You know what I mean? Oh. It's either, so like the grass for instance, what of the three primaries, if you only had red, yellow, blue, right. would it be? Well, most of the grass yellow, but yeah. these little... Well, okay, so there you go. So then you'd start with those yellows okay. on your palette, but is it straight from the tube? No. Well, maybe it has a little bit of blue in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe it ha parts of it have a little bit of red in it. And then you'd start handling values. Does it have white in it to be lighter? Or does it need to have some of the darker colors in it to be darker and so on? Oh. It's a good place to start. Okay, yeah. that is good. I just learned something. <laughs> what? I don't think of like an object that way. Uh, uh, I think that's a really smart way to start. Like, just say, 
is it more red green? is it yellow or is it blue yeah Pre like basically right first right i don't ever that doesn't ever cross my oh, mind really oh. richie that's how i think of it that's how i was taught yeah really? i mean like i've heard people it's just like you only have the three that. primaries and so is it it's usually going to be a mixture of primarily two of them mm -hmm. to get another color yeah. so is it more dominant in that or that and you just mm -hmm. you bend the color this way or that way with maybe the tertiary in there or whatever or the third primary i mean yeah and yeah but it's like is it primarily this or, or that mm -hmm. and that's where you start yeah. yeah it's just like those are like the mother colors you know yeah you are getting the right color right now really Can you it took me a lot of trial and error. Um, That's color mixing. Starting yeah. with yellow. But I actually, so what's this color called? That's yellow ochre. But ochre. it's also in the yellow family. So what I was going to point out is with a palette like this, notice that you've got the primary families. You've got secondary and, and you know, uh, I don't know that you have any tertiary colors, but um, you have warms and cools and lighter and value dark uh, lighter and value uh, lighter and darker values within the same color family so for instance you've got three yellows there one of them being um, much darker than the other two so yellow ochre is still in the yellow family but it's mm -hmm. a darker value mm -hmm. um, and so with a palette like this though you could do it with a really limited palette too um, it makes it kind of nice so that you can also consider value as you're considering the um, which primary color to start with, or primary color family to start with. Will you say that again? Okay, so let's say that you know that the color you're trying to mix is in the yellow family. Okay. But the value is not this light. Right. It's a darker yellow. So you still have a, a, a color on your palette that's in the yellow family, only it's also a darker value. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you would start with that yellow, not mm -hmm. that one. You know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the convenient thing about having a, a, a broader range on your palette rather than just a really limited palette of only the three. Do some people paint like primaries. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People start with just three colors. Yeah, it's great. Well, three colors in white. And white. Um, and that could be red, yellow, blue. Traditionally, some people like to use uh, cadmium red, ivory black, yellow uh -huh. ochre, and white. That's a really limited palette. So, uh, Pete, did that, what Dan told you there about, is it yellow, is it red, is it blue? Did uh -huh. that help at all for yeah. any given object? Absolutely. Do you know color now? <laughs> I'm an expert now. <laughs> that color that you're putting down looks spot on. Really? For that area when it's in sunlight. It's too green. All right. That's that's good. So yellow and blue. But thank you. Being green. So it's probably got too much blue in it. There are parts right. there that seem like maybe it has some blue, but it also might have some red. I noticed that. There are some reds there. Mm -hmm. That makes me afraid. <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules and there are no paint police. Yeah. So you're not going to paint at all? I don't know. God, it's crazy what white does to things. Mm -hmm. But that was the right move to add white to it. Like all thin. Now that's a permanent uh, rose looking color. I don't know what that is, but it looks like a quinacridone kind of red. Or maybe it's an alizarin of some kind, but um... It's not the right move. Which is a true red. Um, but you could also go for a cad red in a case like this because cad red has a little bit of yellow in it. They would be closer to, um, the family that you're working in. Okay. That doesn't look too bad, though. No, that's good. Now you're understanding color.
Now, one interesting thing, look at the road. Mm-hmm. Okay, and compare it to the greens oh. and reds and yellows. Yeah. It's similar, In fact, it? it's but, reddish. Well, but is it as red as the reds that you see? It's not. In the, no, it's not. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, my road's too warm. Very good. I wanted to tell you that so bad, but you figured it out. Good. Good. Thanks. <laughs> oh my god, there's the road color. But there's bits of red. <laughs> Tell her, will you encourage your friends to paint? <laughs> I'm kind wow, of excited about this. That's fantastic. Thing. Thanks, man. That's some accurate painting right there. Here's some crib towels we need. Tell her this is the best. Let's just hire. Let's just hire someone else to do all the video. Uh, oh my God! Look how beautiful that is. That yellow. That yellow light. If only you had a camera to take a picture of it with. Hey. Will you get my cell phone for me? Sure. Thank you. Where's that at? It's in uh, my seat, back back seat zone. Thank you. Dude, you totally fixed that road. Yeah. That's you amazing. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that gray of that road. No, that's like, wow. That's the fourth thickest That is great. Right. right. I am like so proud of myself. I'm so proud of you too. <laughs> None Thank of you, Pete. Thanks. None of you. No, no. Don't get too excited. Do you really want that many voices telling you what to do? Get out of I here, mean. Dan. <laughs> no, so with the the yellows, Dan was t starting to talk about that they're, you know, different values. Mm -hmm. But they're also different temperatures. So this one here is a really cool yellow. Mm -hmm. And that's the one you're primarily using. And most times, I don't know when it wouldn't be, but this light at the evening is actually a warm light. And so using this yellow is actually, even though it's light, you can get your, you're going to not be able to get quite warm enough. It's just going to start turning this really cool. And then when you add white, it's going to get even cooler. So think about mm. using more of this one and this yellow to get some of those bright, those brightest colors that you're getting. But adding white to them. You can add white to them. It's just that they're warm. That's really smart. Thank you. <coughs> So try some of that on there, and if it's too dark or too whatever, you can add, then you know go back and modify it and get a, an idea of where you're at when you put it on the canvas next to all the other colors. That light is changing so much it as is. I go. <laughs> That's yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how you're like putting it down, putting it swatch down and actually like thinking about is that analyzing right? it yeah thanks i have a lot of trouble with cleaning my brush thoroughly like that's like just a basic no that's really good i don't clean my brush <laughs> it's a problem really bad. how do you switch colors well i use different brushes oh right but i if it's too big of a color switch like if it's within the same family you can get away with using the same brush but mm -hmm. if it's really you know, you're working your yellows and then you go to your blues, like on that really light yellow and that dark blue, like I would not use the same mm -hmm. brush. Or sky color and then using it for your dark mountains. Sky too. color, can you get that in a tube? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Actually. Uh. <clears throat> like, you could do a whole landscape painting. You get your sky color, your grass color, your mountain color. Pete, one, one well, thing you, you talked about it. at the very beginning, yeah. which is what, when Ken and I just had our workshop, 
what we kind of how we kind of structured it because we had people from the very beginner level to people who had painted and the first thing you said was what we stressed and you're like when i look out there i see shapes you're like mm -hmm. i see clear shapes distinct shapes mm -hmm. and you labeled them you said that kind of grayish background light those dark mountains this bright yellow green field and so you you just labeled the three like planes yeah four planes right which we, we were telling people like all right look out at this landscape and you obviously see so much so how do you kind of break it down into something you can chew on and it was exactly that it's like try to distill this landscape into three to four maybe five large masses and then we had them without thinking about any detail and without much variation within those three large shapes like draw them in and then fill them in to block in and get like you'll start getting that sense of light <clears throat> and so like your brain was already like thinking on those terms and that's that's kind of how i think when i'm that's cool out there. It's like okay how can i put this into three to five main value masses like mm -hmm. light dark masses and you that's what you're like thinking right off the bat Are you thinking about omitting the corrals? No. You think I should? Uh, I think you should paint what's underneath them and then decide okay. after that. Okay. Which it looks like that's what you're doing. Yeah, I'm just going to actually paint this whole area for now. Yep. Is that what you would do? Yeah, and then you place the detail on top. Yeah. So it's always nice, I think, when you have kind of large big brush brush strokes on top uh -huh. or underneath yeah and then the little little tiny strokes like fence posts and that kind of stuff just sit right on top of those big brush strokes yeah and then that gets much darker there in the hill and I was in my head I'm like lighter darker what is it Lighter, darker, warmer, cooler, higher, lower chroma. That's what Dan says in his video. <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited about this painting, dude. Seems like you've learned a lot in this painting. Is that true? Yeah. Um, I'm really impatient in this. I just, sometimes it takes a good time and place just to be think about things you've learned instead of just jumping into things and I'm pausing more between brush strokes and um, being more intentional and yeah also like yeah thinking a lot about lore and just like putting one down and like committing to it you know and 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 if, the, if you put, if you sampled a color with just a swatch and it looked right, then it probably deserves a whole brush stroke. You know, that's something for me to think about. Oh my God, the light has changed. It's like a different, totally different scene out there now. Isn't that funny? <laughs> that's your world, but... <laughs> I'm such a social creature, I'm just really worried about Ken and Richie being, or that about Richie and Dan being bored, do you know what I mean? I really love those guys. That's been a big part of this trip for me, actually. Just really making these relationships that are so important to you, but I've been pretty outside too, all things considered, you know? you know, feel included, which is a good feeling to have. Is that Ken? How are you guys doing? 
Hey. Painting. <laughs> so, what are you thinking? Man, painting's easy? No. That's not what you're thinking? That's not what I'm thinking. That's what it's looking like, dude. Well, that's really nice of you, thanks. I'm thinking... Do you have an attack plan, or are you just... Like this, like bottom to top for some reason, which is weird because since I'm usually used to drawing, I'm always start up here and move across the space so I don't rub it with my. Yeah, well, some of that still applies with painting for sure. Yeah. Yeah, with plein air painting, I usually try to think about what's going to change the fastest, uh, or what do I need? Like, it's just with plein air painting particularly because it will change on you. Yeah. So yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to go about the process, though. I work background to foreground a lot, or you can work foreground to background a lot. So this isn't a bad way to go? No. Foreground to background? No. Especially if you have like a focus point that you're trying to develop, it's really good to have that all be established as you're going. Yeah, one thing I do not know anything about is freaking paint thickness. Like I don't know how this, the physical properties of the this three-dimensional Oh, that takes a while. Medium works. I don't think I get that either. And I've been painting for years, but... Really? Yeah, it's... A lot of that's up to style. It's not, it's not there's like a right way or a wrong way entirely. It's just that it... Usually, the thicker you paint, the more difficult it is to make changes. Because mm -hmm. you have to use more paint to correct it. Right. But, you know, that's why I usually work thinner when I get going. Because it's, it's easier to make adjustments. But Daniel paints thick all the time. That's true. Thick paint, Dan. Oh yeah, it's thick paint, Dan, over here, everybody. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Come wow, at, at thick me. paint, Dan. <laughs> have you taken a step back there? Pete? I have. I just keep, keep backing up. Back, back, back it up. I don't want to be lined up with all these chains. <laughs> Remember you guys saying about how it's so easy to make this stuff too dark. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's also more purple. It, it is. But see now it's changed a lot. Okay, too. but had we started with the color thing when we first started, yeah, I bet the decisions that you made would have been slightly different. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, because again, you would start the mountains the same way, like what color family uh -huh. does it look like it's dominant? But, uh, as far More as purple, fin well, as far as finishing up, I would definitely, whenever you can't, um, whenever you can't finish the whole thing in one sitting from life, yeah, like in this case, it changes so quickly. Even if you had all day free, right. doesn't mean that that scene's gonna stay that way for more than an hour or two. Yeah. So if there's something I can't get to, I try to make some color notes. Oh. Um, maybe I'm not able to get like the whole sky, but I could match the blue. Uh, you know, if there's some blue or if there's a cloud, light and shadow, uh, just some color notes. You know, to put down. Wow. Yeah. That's really smart. Okay. Because, you know, like in this scenario, um, even though you have the night off, this, you know, light is rapidly fading. Right. Yeah. Right. And in a few minutes, this is going to be probably glowing red or something. You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you so much. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> My little protege. <laughs> I want to be just like you when I grow up. Did you know that? Don't. Yeah, you don't. <sighs> <laughs> oh, wow. It really blocks out sound. Isn't that cool? Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? And then when I talk, yeah. I, I talk and straighten into your heart, aren't I? Can you whisper you, sweet nothings into my ear? Do you want to become a filmmaker now? Hey, sweet chickadee. Yeah. You should have been wearing... Okay. Oh, I should have been wearing the cowboy hat. The Murphy hat. 
No, Pete, you should be you. Unless you want to be more like me. <laughs> In which case. <laughs> you know what they say, uh, be yourself, unless you can be Beyonce, then be Beyonce. Oh, yeah. I like that, yeah. <laughs> That was like the darkest thing before, and now it's so bright. I don't know what to do about that. I mean, barring Dan's advice to finish it later. And I want to finish it now. But dude, the clouds were outrageous when we got here. Yeah. Good thing they're not there anymore, because that would be a nightmare to paint. Yeah. Hmm, so I need to make it blue. You make a lot of it. You make like a grown up amount of painting. Paint. It can be a lot of white because that sky is such a light value. Yeah. And it's got some of that yellow that you already have in the underpainting. I want to make one of those skies like you guys make where you can see the brush strokes in the sky. The clouds are like it, you can just decide that it does something. Like it doesn't have to be. Yep. You're the creator. Do you probably take the most liberty with sky? Yeah. Yeah? I do, because I, I usually find like a cloud pattern that I liked and it's definitely not there anymore and I just end up making it up with you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I seriously can't believe how fun your job is. <laughs> that is such a good little painting. Well, thanks. Thank you. It's so good, Pete. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks, good. Ken. How tall are you, Pete? I'm 6'2". Oh, really? Must be nice. Yeah. Pete Ruffles. That'll work. So. You got any Ruffles down? These things are Ooh. Oh, they're original? I'll, have, I'll, I'll do a little salty potato. Ken loves taters. Oh. <laughs> Must not be too bad, are they, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, dude, this is the scariest part, is we have to go back and, like, fill in a couple spots. You know how horrifying uh, that is? What do you mean, fill no, in fill spots? In. Like, what are you filling in? Stop it. Just stop. Look at this part right here. What spot? That part's too thin. All right, you can always cover that later, or just take, yeah, just take No, there's no later. I'm fishing this painting right this second. take your finger and... No. Yeah. Yes. Seriously, give me more. Look at that, though. Huh? No. It's a 40 cal. It's not about the name. It's not about the caliber. Finger painting, Tyler? You ever do this? I've never... I've never gotten paint on my fingers. It's too thin now. Nice work, Pete. Thanks. Very, very nice. Solid. So I think we should need to do more often in our video shooting is like ask for like anticipations well, and recaps. You know, like well, kind of book. How do you anticipate this going? You can't <laughs> yeah. Like how to cook it. And then at the end be like, how did that go? Well, I mean, how did that go? Um, it went well. I was shocked at how fast the light changed, but I should have known that that was coming. Um, and it's, so it's funny having to compromise at the end and make the, um, the mountains yeah. the same color as they were a few hours ago. Um, but I think it went pretty well. It doesn't look quite as like t loud and technicolor as my usual work does. So I feel like this is a <coughs> success. <laughs> that was great. No, I do that right. <laughs> the camera. What's 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 your recap of of uh, oh, no. this evening's painting session here? Oh well, the recap is that Pete's the only one man enough. That was a lazy turd. Garbage man, freaking office person. Painted turd. But Pete did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really good. Thoroughly. That's really nice. Thanks. 
Food. Yeah, I got your garbage bag. All right, let's go get some. Oh, that's great. Let's go get some food. And what's that? Okay. All right. Like that's really there's me looking solid back there. Yeah, it's all sliding around, but 